Gentlemen and gentlemen, Dr. Hao. Jintian Wo Hui Shuo Ingwen. In my home country, the USA, we borrowed an ancient Chinese curse to wish people a fulfilling and meaningful life journey in the face of trouble, challenging, and even tragic times. We say, may you live in interesting times. Friends, we are now, irrespective of our age, gender, or our national origin, or social status, all living in what may be called the most interesting times of the 300,000 year history of homo sapien or human life. We humans now thoroughly dominate the planet. And as a species, we've used and abused our collective home so that we now face the very first of six planetary extinctions, the first brought about by mankind itself. We have, through greed, thoughtlessness, materialism, and significant disconnection, even alienation from nature, brought ourselves to the brink of extinction of our far-flung civilizations. We are bringing about the collapsing of ecosystems that threaten many other species up and down the evolutionary species ladder. Global roasting came upon large parts of the world this past summer, drying rivers and lakes, destroying crops, killing or bringing starvation to people and livestock and flooding vast areas. Yes, the interesting times are fast upon us and bring with it a deepening collective sense of dread and anxiety and depression. Whether we are conscious or not of this impending apocalypse, the collective feeling of dread and depression and anxiety suffuse most every society. We are now in a time of increasing human unhappiness. In my work with individuals and organizations over the last 55 years, there is one powerful lesson my clients have taught me. The universe speaks to each one of us if we listen carefully to whom each of us are at our authentic core. We instinctually or intuitively come to know what we need not only to survive, but how to find happiness and a sense of purpose in a world unfortunately organized so that we consume mindlessly in a sea of emptiness and loneliness. At the same time, those who hold power protect and expand their wealth and advantages. Yes, we do live in a toxic world that is hurtling us towards annihilation unless we individually and collectively find a new, healthy, and sustainable way forward. The wisest minds of the East and West tell us that deeply knowing who we are places us firmly on the pathway to becoming our own hero. External forces may push us this way or that way, but self-awareness like a gyroscope keeping a ship on course in a storm, keeps us heading towards that true north, which is our personal destiny. The question is how to establish this baseline of self-knowledge in a time of unparalleled sweeping change. The challenging times we live in call on each of us to develop a new mindset with the emerging age of scarcity we are entering. It requires that everyone in the gigantic human boat be pulling in the same direction of transforming our societies into ones that are sustainable, where bodies of water are pure again, where soil is refreshed and insects and animals that sustain that soil are protected we need our atmosphere cleared of the various and sundry chemicals and plastic particles that threaten the health of all living creatures, including plants and trees. 
we need to find ways of creating building materials such as concrete, glass, and steel that do not use fossil fuels by developing renewable energy resources. Rather than throwing up our collective hands in a cynical surrender to the doom and gloom that so much of the research and news brings to us about the imminent collapse of civilization as we know it, we need to develop the moral fortitude, fortitude to take on the collective challenge to our existence. We need to develop an informed, realistic optimism and a willingness to change our habits and expectations on the high road to sustainability. This is a moral imperative that requires exactly what of us? We must develop the resiliency and discipline that we admire in our heroes, but within ourselves. Each of us has vast potential, but we have been conditioned to rely on those in power to save us when the saving is not only up to each one of us, but to our joining with others in actively saving life as we know it on this planet. My professional life has been dedicated to guiding people on their hero's journey to find the true core of their being and in the process setting about clarifying their life mission and doing their best to achieve that mission. Franz Fanon, the Martinique psychiatrist who wrote the powerful The Wretched of the Earth in his last 60 days before dying of cancer, tells us each generation must discover its mission, fulfill it, or betray it. My generation of the war babies or baby boomers had as our mission the securing of world peace and the termination of colonialism. We have failed that mission. Generation X had its generational mission, the fairer distribution of wealth and the protection of the environment. It has also failed its mission. The millennial generation is just coming into its own and has as its mission picking up the pieces of the two previous generations and making our planet and its people whole. It is struggling in its mission, but just now increasingly taking power. Generation Z seems to have the greatest mission of all as the existential environmental pressures mount and the gaps between the haves and the have-nots widen and social and political unrest rock even the most seemingly stable regimes in the world. It is the journey to self-awareness that serves as the inevitable foundation for the change of mindset and the discipline required to transform our consumerist addictions and create solutions leading to a truly sustainable world. We, as all the great philosophers and wise ones have told us, are all connected. We are one. And as we become more self-aware, we channel the universe in all our uniqueness as we learn the secret sauce of happiness, which is built on the two legs of love and work. When we tap into that core, which defines us, no matter the differences in our brain operating systems that do differentiate us, we increasingly find ourselves in flow as we live out truth in the relationships we establish, the natural skills we are passionate about using, the values we hold dearest and live by, and the interests and work that provide us a sense of purpose and meaning each one of us yearn for. The more we live lives true to our core, the more we tap into and develop the potential that allows us to be who we are destined to become. When we place ourselves on the path of greater self-awareness, we maximize the possibility of not only our own fulfillment in life, 
but position ourselves to be of maximum benefit to those immediately around us and to society as a whole. This day is dedicated to the important concept of Ding with its various meanings, but the focus is on Buding today. The future of mankind if we do not take action in these challenging times. Generation Z, you who are students, have as a moral imperative to unite with others around the world of your generation in the great awakening necessary to build a sustainable future for your own and for future generations. Our survival, your survival, depends on it. Onding peace requires us to face the uncertainty. We must work to know ourselves to gain inner peace and merge that with knowing the system we are living in. We humans are all facing many of the same existential threats. Here in China, we see the somewhat nihilistic movement similar to the great resignation in my home country. Tang Ping is essentially that same resignation from the suffocating rat race of modern day life. The competition for wealth, status, and power none of which is equitably distributed in most every society on the face of the earth, have increasingly become either hollow while on our journey to find happiness or very unlikely to be realized. While some, usually the already privileged, point the finger at the Tom Ping or lying flat movement as slackers and lazy, they miss the worldwide phenomenon of the end of capitalism as a driving force to a better life for all, but a small minority. This has led to the next logical movement amongst young Chinese, the Baolin, or let it rot movement, a very serious challenge to the common prosperity commitment of the central government. All societies to survive in this new age of scarcity must provide its people with a vision for the international movement for a sustainable future. Economies must adjust to the profound shift from profits and self-interest and post-colonial exploitation to one of unleashing the potential within each of us to put our collective talents and passions to the wheel of reinventing human civilization. Jue Ding is deciding to take action in the face of uncertainty. By acting on our own behalf in a worldwide cooperative effort, we will take our destiny into our own hands. When the Gallup organization conducted its first annual worldwide survey of the global workplace, in 2013, it found 21% of the world's workforce engaged in their work. These one in five engaged employees enjoyed their jobs and were in harmony with their organization and its values and mission. In 2013, China, coming to the end of its years of being the world's cheap labor workshop, only 6% of employees were engaged. In the latest 2022 survey, the world continues with only 21% of global employees engaged, while China's rate increased to 17% and the USA holding steady at 33%. What emerges is a static picture of worker dissatisfaction with fully four out of five employees either doing minimal work to just get by in their jobs or actively hating their work and or hating their employers. What is to be done? First, self-awareness needs to be made a core part of the middle and high school curricula of all students in the world. 
Every society benefits when people become strongly aware of how they have become who they are, their life stories that hold the clues that make our lives meaningful and worthwhile. This focus on the personal development of each of us in our mental, emotional, and spiritual lives should continue on into higher education as well as into the training and development programs of companies, government, community centers, and technical schools and apprenticeships. This revolution in values places human development at the core of our existence and shoves the pursuit of lifeless and inanimate things, consumerism, to the back burners of our existence. It focuses on maximizing happiness as the only legitimate pursuit in life, as well as the healing necessary that allows each of us the maximum opportunity to lead the good life that should be our fundamental right. The pathway to a happy, happier and more meaningful life is secured by maximizing our flow experiences. Those times when we are so engaged in what we are doing that we lose track of time, hunger, even the need to visit the bathroom. Currently, jobs are created far more to generate profit through control over others by the few. This kind of system renders most people on the earth helpless in the face of environmental and economic forces that powerfully impact our lives. On the other hand, Dr. Linda Hill, the Harvard Business School anthropologist, found that by embedding her research teams in top corporations, government agencies, and NGOs and labor unions, the most effective innovative leaders were those who created organizations that brought out the best in all of its people. Organizations that invest in their workforce's development is what to look for as you enter society after graduation. And that includes those of you who will continue with education of higher learning. Look for places, organizations, universities, and people that will treat you with respect and dignity and which have an eye on a more sustainable and caring human future. Sigmund Freud famously tells us that human happiness is built on the two legs of love and work, our personal and work relationships, as well as the content of the work itself, must draw from the best of who we are to allow a life where most every day is a series of flow experiences. Why do I emphasize flow experiences? Because our happiness as humans is based on our relationships. Our relationship first to ourselves, at our core, and then to all manner of living beings. Living in flow is living in our passions, our best selves. Just imagine a civilization like this, not one where we are forced to do meaningless work for millionaire or billionaire employers or managers who play destructive games. These exploiters get rich uh, and, and a hit of psychological pleasure at our expense, and we waste our precious time and emotional well-being on their nonsense. How much better it would be for us to spend our energy and time caring for others, developing others, improving the quality of the lives of others, and protecting the vulnerable or being guardians for the future of our loved ones or our communities. Just imagine a civilization based on a matrix of relationships between all the lives of all people and animals and fish and trees that is not based on exploitation and mindless consumption, ownership and competition, but rather on love, freedom, caring, dignity, and mutual respect. Well, each of you must first and foremost pay serious attention to who you are and where you are going. You must also be aware of how the systems and institutions of the society are living in affecting you. Every generation that has preceded you has good reason to believe that there would be a tomorrow. Your Generation Z is the first not to have that guarantee. Having a future is not guaranteed. The future is not being given to you. 
You must take it. My humble best wishes to you on your hero's journey. Thank you for your sharing.